So I became a smarter. So all the books I published after that, I did not put anything. <laughs> I did not put anything. Uh, and so no problems, just just the chapters. Then uh, they are less uh, suitable for classes. They are more suitable for uh, what we call uh, references. Anyway. Uh, so what we did last time, we talked about the concept of, of a master, right? Main channel. Master. It looks like this. Silicon, except this layer is called is a silicon dioxide, which, by the way, is a thin slater. Thin slater. One that has the, the shape, these are metal. Uh, we use different metals, by the way, but the most popular metal is what? Huh? Uh, aluminum or uh, copper. Okay? So, the, so this is called the N-channel master uh, because what happens if you apply a voltage to the gate, huh? it's going to create electric field. This uh, electric field from top to the bottom, and then you can create what we call the uh, 
distortion. Channel. Yeah. Then the device is turned on. So the symbol of this device is like this. Grand gate source. Okay, the current, drain current, source current. Okay, so I sub D is always equal to I sub S, and I sub G is always zero. What? Because, because again, as I said, this is very can be easily, right? So there's no gate current. Ideal. Okay, and uh, the voltage, this is typically <laughs> grounded. So there's a voltage between here and here. We call this VDS. And there's a voltage between the gate and the ground, we call VGS. And then when you have a chance to do that, you can measure the ID curve. Our last step, right? And uh, for, for a specific VGS, you get a curve like this. And this can be separated into two different regions. This voltage is called VD set. So, so this is the region called the linear region, and this region is called the situation. The name is uh, self-explanatory, right? Because uh, the reason it's called linear is because the curve is more or less linear. Uh, in the situation, the curve is flat, right? So it's called situation. So first, in order to get its curve, the VGS must be larger than or equal to VDN, which is called the threshold voltage. This is not the case, then you will have zero curve. So if this is happening, then the device is on. It's turned on. Okay. Then depending on the value of VDS, if VDS <laughs> is less than VD set, then we are in the linear. And if VDS is larger than or equal to VD set, then we are in the situation. Okay. And this is the region we prefer. So when you design a circuit, you always want the MOSFET to operate in the in the situation. Okay, then what is the VD set? VD set is equal to VGS minus VDN. Okay. So now I'm going to give you equations that correlate the current and, uh, and the voltage.
So this is for so this equation is for the, the linear operation. That means what? That means your VGS is larger than equal to VGN and your VDS is less than VG set. Yes? These are the requirements. Okay, the other equation, I sub B is equal to KN VGS minus VGN for square, or this is the same as saying uh, sub this to VG, uh, VG set, right? So VG set to the square. So this equation is for the saturation operation. Okay. And then what are the conditions? Yeah, VGS again must be larger than equal to VGN, right? Otherwise it divides off. And VDS must be larger than equal to VG set. Okay, there's a parameter I have not specified it, yeah, which is k sub n. So I need to talk about k sub n. Uh, so, is there a name for k sub n or not? Yes, the k sub n is called the uh, conduction parameter. Many more huh? Okay, first of all, what is W? W is the width of master. Okay? You know what's the width? This is a two-dimensional plot, correct? The width is the, the third dimension, right? Got it? Sandwiched between the two N regions. Huh? And I told you last time that L is a is a what? It's a metric. Yeah. For the technology. The smaller, the more advanced. Right now we are at 10 nanometers. Next year, I think we could go down to seven. But it cannot be zero, huh? What happens if this is zero? If this is zero, then these two will touch each other. Then all you have is a, is a resistor, right? All you have is a N. In order to have a device, you must have at least one PN junction. See? Right? <coughs> so it cannot go to zero. So many people are arguing what is the limitation of L? Yeah. What is the, the smallest L? Is it big? 
I think we are pretty, pretty close. Seven nm. Yeah. So that means the the evolution of our uh, current technology would have to stop very soon. Um, I just heard an article too that uh, said they're working on using carbon nanotubes. I guess to like keep shrinking it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There, there are many. Um, there are many new ideas mm -hmm. of how to um, how to uh, go from the traditional silicon this is silicon mm -hmm. silicon technology to some uh, new technology uh, using uh, new type of materials. Right. Like the, the, the thin carbonate material, uh, organic material. By the way, this is silicon inorganic. Got it? Okay. Uh, but those are more or less research type of work. When you make devices like this, uh, you cannot just make one out of a thousand, and there is only one that works, right? It's gotta be consistent. Yeah. 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 Uh, there, there's a there's a name in the industry called yield. Yield. Yield represent the percentage of products on the way. You know, when you have a wafer, huh? like this, right? You process the wafer. As I told you, the process will take about 20 to, 20 to 25 steps. Very expensive, okay? So at the end, what you have? You have many um, circuits on the, on the wafer. But of course, you don't use the whole wafer, right? You, what do you do? You cut it, you know? Cut them into uh, small pieces. Okay? So each one we call this die. So, so then we put the die uh, into the, uh, the packaging, right? And so that's the die. Got it? If you open up your computer, uh, you, see, you see this, right? black powder, right? But that's not the chip. The real stuff is what is inside, right? Okay? And that is coming from here. Now, uh, to make a profit, the yield must be larger than 85% or so. Hmm? So that means 85% of the diet must be good diets. Now, the, uh, a lot of uh, new type of areas, like you just mentioned, the yield is probably 10% uh, or less. So, you know, you can do this in research lab, you publish your paper, right? But for, for particle applications, uh, that's not yeah, the problem. Okay, you know, of course, the cost, right? The cost, the yield, and also the reliability, right? So, for example, I don't know if you know organic, if you use organic materials to make devices, uh, the organic material can oxidize with, with the air very quickly, so maybe uh, the chip will become uh, not usable in about three days. So we do buy something like that. Silicon is very reliable, right? You, know, you can use it for more than 20 years. Yeah. Okay, so where were we? So we are, I'm trying to try to explain to you the, uh, this equation. Uh, new cement, what is new cement? New cement is called uh, electron mobility. New cement is called electron mobility. So, what does 
that's what I mean. So this prompter will tell you how fast the platform will to move. Hmm? To move. Now of course you want this to be as high as possible, right? Because if you if you use the mass set, you shouldn't feel a high frequency circuit, right? Then the devices in the circuit must be very fast. Switch. And the switching time depends on this. Um, is the switching time on a transistor faster than a MOSFET typically? You mean with PGT? Yeah, that's right. Uh, not necessarily. No. I think MOSFET becomes faster. It's faster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So MOSFET, the reason MOSFET uh, becomes so popular over the PGT, uh, there are several reasons. First, uh, the switching speed is very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost is low. The power consumption is low. So I think these are the three main factors uh, for the market. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, since we are talking about this, I thought I would give you some um, some recent uh, advancement. Uh, so there's a way to increase the uh, the, the mobility. Uh, one is to not to use silicon. Silicon typically has small electron mobility. And that's why for thin, right? People have thought about replace putting the uh, graphene and use that as the channel. And graphene, the mobility of graphene is about a thousand times higher than silicon. Got it? Okay. But unfortunately there are other issues, right? The yield, the mobility, the cost, okay, so 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 just the speed, that's not gonna work, okay? But graphene has the advantage of very high speed. But people still like to use silicon, right? Silicon is a very nice material. So about ten years ago, uh, some people have invented a, a process in which they can they can press uh, silicon material to make it uh, to make it a higher uh, electron mobility. So, for example, uh, so this is silicon. <laughs> so somehow we can find a way to to to, uh, to press the material, and then once this material is pressed, then the mobility will become higher. And there's a name for that. It's called the, um, I think I forgot. What's the name for that? So anyway, uh, that was one of the way to make it, uh, make it faster, okay? Okay. Uh, let me go on. C oxide. C oxide is called uh, oxide layer uh, capacitance. Okay, and it is equal to uh, epsilon oxide over P oxide. So this. Uh, the dielectric conductivity of silicon dioxide and is equal to 3.9 times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 14 per per centimeter. Okay, so it's a constant. Different material have different dielectric permittivity. Yeah? And P oxide is the is the oxide layer thickness. Okay. <coughs> later on, not later on, right here. 
can see that I sub B will increase if C oxide is increased. Correct? Because if this is higher, K7 is larger, the turn current is larger. Now you always want to design a transistor that gives you a larger current, right? Therefore, an easy way to do that is to what? <coughs> is to reduce the uh, the gay oxide uh, uh, friction, right? So that's why when the uh, Technology is advancing, the channel becomes shorter, and the gay oxide thickness becomes smaller. Unfortunately, there's a price you have to pay. If this becomes so thin, then remember there's a voltage on the gate, right? So that can cause what we call a leakage current. So if this becomes too small, then the gay leakage current goes up, which is not desirable. So what do you do? So what do you do to keep C oxide low high and at the same time try to reduce the gay leakage current? Well, so people came up with a, an idea called the high K dielectric. Number right here represent the K number. Okay? So for silicon dioxide, K is equal to 3.9. So the idea is the following, right? If I can use a material that has a much higher K value, yes, then I don't have to I don't have to reduce the thickness in order to get a large C oxide, correct? So that's the idea. And uh, all the sub twenty nanometer uh, devices. Means these advanced devices um, do not use uh, a traditional silicon dioxide. Okay, they use a high K. And the purpose is very simple, right? As I have just told you, if you have a high K, this is high, then C oxide become high, and then I sub B become large. Right? a parameter introduced in the book. I don't know what's the purpose, but uh, I need to let you know. So the book introduced a parameter called K7 prime, and that is equal to mu 7 C oxide. So uh, if you compare these two, you would know that K7 is equal to K7 prime times one half over a times omega over L. Omega? Uh, w. Uh, w, yeah. W over L. Well, I guess the reason for this uh, new parameter is what? 
is that you can see that this is the dimension, right? It's the dimension of the mass gas. And this has nothing to do with the dimension. It has to do with the, the physical property of the mass gas. So maybe that's the reason. Okay, by the way, this device is called the enhancement mode. means you must have to apply a gate voltage which is larger than or equal to the threshold voltage before the device is turned on. Okay, there, there must be a, a different device. That means uh, the device is on even with no gain voltage. say, how could this happen? Huh? Well, sometimes, huh? in some cases, uh, when you make this device, uh, the channel will become, even though the background is P-type, the channel will may already have the inversion channel. Yes? Got it? So that means after you have finished the process of the, of the device, you already have you already have the uh, the end channel, right? So in that case, uh, as soon as you apply a voltage to the train terminal, you don't have to apply any voltage to the gate. The device is turned off because it's in and in. Got it? So it's 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 just good or bad. You say, oh, it's nice, it's good. No, it's bad. Why is it bad? Because now would have to figure out how to turn it off, right? So the question is not how to turn it on. The question is how to turn it off. And sometimes it is more difficult to turn it off than to turn it on. So for circuit design, uh, we prefer to have enhancement mode, and we do not like to have transmission mode. All right. Then let me just spend a few minutes to talk about the P-channel MOSFET, and then we can do some examples. So of course you can have a P-channel, right? But we don't use P-channel as much as main channel. There's a reason for that. Everything has a reason. So P channel. All right. Now, what is the voltage and the gate you have to apply? You see, in order to turn this on, what do you need? You need an inversion of what? Of poles, right? So you have PPP, right? Okay. So therefore, this voltage must be what? Negative, correct? So that you can push. So if this is negative, the electric field goes up like this, yeah? 
So then you you push the host away, you push the electrons away from the surface, and then you create the uh, the inversion of host. Hmm? And what about what's the polarity at the drain? You know, to get a hole out. Yeah? Minus, correct? Yeah. So, so your BTP, which is the which is the threshold voltage. Negative, yes. And your BBS also has to be uh, negative. Negative compared to the ground. Yeah? So uh, I like to keep this equation. Use it. So when you do the measurements, uh, they will be in the in the negative <coughs> IB versus BBS, right? So it will be like this. Huh? Now, of course, uh, this is just for one VG, right? You can have different VG, huh? different VG, correct? So you can have different uh, curves. Now, I mentioned that uh, we do not use P channel as much as N channel. There's a reason because in the PC channel you can see that the flow of current uh, is uh, constituted by by what? Oh by God. the transfer of holes, right? And the means of P, which is the whole mobility, yeah, is is less than means of N, right? So therefore, P channel master is always uh, as far as the speed is concerned, right? it's always uh, slower than uh, the main channel. So for analog circuit design, which is the focus of this class, huh? for analog, uh, we prefer to use N channel instead of P channel. For digital, you, have, you don't have a choice, right? For digital circuit, you have to use uh, what? You have to use CMOS, correct? Digital because you do switching, and CMOS is the is the combination of an N channel and uh, P channel. Master. So a C means uh, what? Complementary. Okay. So when when people tell you about CMOS, don't think CMOS as a single device. It is a combination of, of N channel and P channel. Okay, so uh, because of the time concern, we're going to focus on we're going to focus on N channel. Okay, and uh, we only we're going to focus on the enhancement mode. <coughs> So here, this is a very typical MOSFET circuit. chapter is always the DC biasing, right? So here we're going to talk about the DC 
biasing, right? We are not we are not talking about the AC operation. When we get to the next chapter, then we can talk about the AC operation. Well, you should understand the purpose of the purpose of R1 and R2, right? It's like the in the PJD circuit, uh, you use this to get the proper voltage at the uh, at the base terminal, but now you try to get the proper voltage at the gate terminal. Yeah. Okay. And there is a uh, VGS, right? This is VPS, correct? Okay, and I sub G, but it's equal to zero, correct? There's no K voltage. I'm sorry, there's no K current. And this is I sub B, which is I sub S, just the same as I sub B. Yeah? All right. I think the first thing to do is to try to figure out the DC low line, the Q point. First of all, let me call this voltage here as my V of G, correct? Okay? And VG is a function of VPV, right? Correct? The same concept as the VJD circuit. Then we go around the loop. Yes? We have VG, this voltage to ground, yes? So VG equal to what? VG equal to VGS, right? Plus IPRS. Unfortunately, we cannot solve this equation because it has two unknowns. This unknown, this is unknown. Yes? In the VJD circuit, it's different, right? In the VJD circuit, when you try to do the KDR, you get one equation and one unknown. Like this. So for the MOSFET, it's different. Okay, what do you do? Now you need a second equation. So we can use this, the, the formula we have for I sub B as the second equation. But now we have a problem. Uh, there are two different equations, right? One for the linear equation, the other one for the saturation. So therefore, we have to choose one. But typically, we will assume that the MOSFET is in saturation. And then we have to we have to check this later, okay? Because sometimes the master can be in uh, in the beginning. So if you do that, then according to the equation, I sub B equal to equal to what? Equal to Kn Vgs minus Vgn to the square, right? So I will call this equation one. This is equation two. Yes? So now I have two equations and two unknowns. Huh? So this this is unknown. Uh, this is unknown. Yes? Two unknowns. So therefore, you can solve for VGS. <coughs> And ID, correct? Dr. Ruth? Yeah. Um, 
out of curiosity, is uh, is case of n going to be something we're going to like need yes. to solve for? Case of n is a uh, is a parameter that will be given. It'll be given. Okay. Yeah, it'll be All given. Right. Uh, basically, uh, case of n and this P, P -P -N, mm -hmm. These are the parameters. Things that won't change through our exam. Okay. Well, or not needed to solve. They right. are related to the to the master. Right. Okay. Right. Then we go to the output loop, right? So VDD equal to ID RD plus CDS plus ID RS, right? That's the ADL. Just like the Bayesian circuit, right? All right. Uh, now I can try to find out what is uh, VDS, right? Yes, equal to VDD minus ID RS plus RD. Yes. Because all is unknown, right? <clears throat> then, once you have found this, you need to verify the assumption. What's the assumption? We have assumed that the mass type is in the association, right? So what does that mean? That means we have assumed VDS is larger than or equal to VDZ, yes? And VDZ is equal to VGS minus VPN. That's the formula. Okay, so what? So this is known now, right? This is this is given, so you know that. And then now we have found VDS, so you can compare the two, so you can verify the, the assumption. So what happens if the assumption is incorrect? Huh? Yeah, you have to come back. You have to use a different equation, right? You have to use the linear. Equation and then go back and solve the problem again. All right, now what about the low line? The same concept, right? So, low line is determined by the JVR of the output loop. So, this equation, right? So, this is ID. Yes. Yes. Okay. First of all, we can place the two points, huh? Because we have found that we have found ID. Well, that ID is the same as what ID Q, right? To be like this VD is the same as VDS Q. Yes. So there's a, there's a VDS Q, there's ID Q, right? <coughs> Okay, in the boundaries of the low line, uh, this one is always uh, VDD, yes? Now this one is always uh, VDD over RDC, yes? And uh, you should know what's RDC, yeah? RDC is uh, RD plus RS, correct? So that's the, that's the total resistance of the output loop onto the AC under the DC condition. Hmm? Okay. Um, unfortunately, for for the mass test, it becomes a little more complex because there is a locus. Remember, this is the locus that separates the linear and the situation. Huh? Linear and uh, saturation. Okay. So this is the locus of what? Remember, the locus of V D set. Yes. On the uh, on the locus, these are 
the different VT set. Okay, so therefore, when there is an intercept of the locus and the P, the P, uh, the P zero line, then that is called the transition point. Or And on the transition point, there's a current called IDT, and there's a voltage called VTST. So why do we have to worry about the P point? Because the P point represents the upper limit of the BC operation of the MOSFET. Got it? Because it is beyond the key point, then the MOSFET is in the linear region, which is not what we like. We want the MOSFET to, to operate in the situation. Huh? So the, the meaning of the key point is that it is the upper point of the BC operation of the MOSFET. So now the question is, how do I find the P point? So that means ID must be larger than or equal to zero, less than or equal to IDT. Yes? And uh, VTSQ must be larger than zero, and less than or equal to, uh, sorry, larger than not zero. But SP and less than equal to BT. Okay, so that is the the PC operation region of a MOSFET. Got it? Okay, so now I'm going to give you the formula that can be used to calculate Trying to find a P point. You use the same equation, same KVI equation for the upper loop, upper loop, but you put everything as P, okay? So VDD equals to IDT, yes? RP cross VDSP cross IDT RS, okay? The same equation, but the current becomes P, the, the voltage. And also, IDT is equal to KN VDSP to the square. Because the reason I can do this, because the P point is how the locus line. No, this is this is the equation for the for situation. Huh? So because my P points are on the locus line, that means uh, the device is always under the situation operation. Okay. So if you combine these two, right? You have two unknowns. IDT and the VDSP. Okay, so you can you can, you can solve for IDT can solve for VDSP. I know you want to see some, some numbers, yeah? So I'm going to do an example uh, now with, the, with numbers, okay? Let's see how much time I have. I one or two. Oh, I can do one. All right, let's go ahead.
use the same equation, uh, the same circuit. Okay, I'm not going to use the old circuit, okay? I will use the same, uh, the same circuit. Uh, PPT is uh, 10 volts. PPA is uh, 2 volts and 21 milliamp per volt square. E, N, K, R, S, P, K, R, 1 plus R, 2, which is known, 1 times K, okay, I, P, is given, 25 milliamp, above, by R1 and R2, P, Q point, P point, P seven one. All right, ready? Now you notice that these two these two functors are device functors, right? So they are always given. Okay, so let's assume a uh, situation. So I sub P equal to KN BGS minus BPN to the square. Right? And I sub P is given. K7 is given. Yes, is unknown. Right? So therefore, we can calculate BGS. Well, you must you must know that BGS. Just must be partial density. BPN, correct? Otherwise, we can have no curve. All right. So, so I know BGS. What do I do next? Right? So if you go around the room, BG equal to BGS, yes? Yeah. Plus IP. Actually, let's, let's assume it's IP2, right? IP2 times R sub S, yes? And IP is given. BGS is known, right? So therefore, BG equal to BGS, that's uh, 4.2, yeah? Plus IP that's given 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 RS. RS is given. It's okay, yes? Okay. So therefore, 
four, I can get a number for B G. Uh huh. B G what's B G? Five point two. Thank you. Then I go back to this equation, right? B G equal to B B D times R1 plus R2 and then R2, right? So this is low, 5.2, this is uh, Pembo, yes? R2 is not known, but the combination of R1 and R2 is, is given, which is 100K, yes? So therefore, we can calculate R2, 52K, and R1 is equal to 48K. Now I need to go to the outer loop to figure out what is the ES. And then I have to go back and double check my, uh, my assumption, yes? Okay, so if you go to outer loop, EDD equal to I D R D plus B D S Q plus I D R S. Yes? So therefore, B D S Q is equal to that 10 minus I D R D plus R S. Right? So I got, I got 4. Now it's time to, to verify our assumption. Yeah? Okay, so what is BD set? Which is uh, BGS minus BDN, correct? And BGS uh, we found was uh, 4.2, right? And BDN uh, is given, which is 2, so it's 2.2 bug. Now the question is is this larger than that or smaller than that, right? So now we have found that BDSQ is larger than BD set. So therefore, the, uh, the assumption is checked. Hmm? Okay, so now I have to draw the PC level line.
like I said, uh, when you try to apply the key point, you use the same uh, equation for the upper loop, but now you put a key. Yeah? So this becomes IDT for the EFT. And then IDT for the KN to EFT for the square. Right? Now I need to warn you. Huh? This equation depends on the circuit. Okay? You don't want to always use that. Right? Because that's the, that depends on the output loop of the circuit. This equation is always the same. Right? So for example, if I, if I do not have R sub B, then, then this one will disappear, right? And then you only have two terms. Okay, so you can plug this in, right? So you get B, T, T equal to K, N, B, T, S, T square, right? Times R sub B plus B T S T plus K N B T S T square R sub X. Right? And I put this equation into this equation. Okay, I get this. Okay, then I can plug in numbers. So this is K, yes? K N is uh, is 21 times 10 to the power 3. The R sub B is uh, 10 times 10 to the 3. Yes? Okay. Plus BTST plus KN R sub S. Okay. So that's the equation. So basically, uh, this is a quadratic, yeah, quadratic equation. So you get two solutions. Yeah? Two solutions for BTST, yes? I think one will be negative, one will be positive. So you take up the, uh, you take the uh, positive one. So BTST will be uh, something like that. Okay? 2.5 volts, and then you plug this into the, into the equation, right? Then you can find IDT will be about 0.16 milliamp. Now you must verify your answers, huh? Make sure they make sense, right? Because if you look at the value of IDT, you can see that IDT must be located between here and here, correct? If this is not the case, you know something is, is, is wrong. So I have found IDT to be 0.6 milliamp, which is below this 0.8 and is higher than 0.5. Right? So that's, that's more than correct. So therefore, the, uh, as far as the I sub P is concerned, right? So I sub P must, or I sub I D Q, huh? if you want to design the circuit, I D Q must be located between zero and 0.63 million. Yes? And uh, BTS, BTSQ must be located between, uh, between uh, 2 
2.50 and uh, 10 bucks. Yes? Thank you. 